Hey everyone, I'm Jack here with 360 Fitness and here in this module we're going to learn why people buy. So we kind of know uh, the psychology of the prospect, we kind of know the point of view of the clients, we kind of know what they're thinking about, what they want, what their needs are, everything else like that that brought them in for the consultation and let them sit down with you and let them spill the beans to you. Okay, so here I want to talk about what are the driving forces behind somebody actually pulling the trigger, somebody actually committing, and somebody actually buying a service, okay? So it's all fun and games actually until a sale is made, all right? So we can't fulfill our mission, we can't fulfill our obligation, we can't fulfill our duty until we get that person to buy in mentally and financially, right? That's when we get the commitment from the person, okay? So really when it comes down to it, people buy for two reasons. Number one is the value ladder, and that means that somebody holds the service and the benefit of like what they're gonna get from that product or service in higher value than the money that they have in their pocket, okay? Number two is people are on pain versus pleasure. So they are trying to avoid pain as much as possible, get that out of their lives, or seek pleasure to bring more pleasure into your lives. We'll talk about that in a different lesson. But for this one, we're talking about the value ladder, all right? So when a prospect comes in and sees you, they're already pre-qualified, they already kind of know what we're all about. Uh, they're an educated consumer. It's great because the sales process isn't a high pressure sales process then, it's an education process all along the way. And then we have a lot more of an honest interaction and two-way interaction, all right? So that person already knows that the service is gonna be a little bit more expensive, that the investment is there, but we also have to translate that value to them, okay? So when we're talking about the value ladder, again, remember that the value to that person can be entirely different than what you think the value of that person is, all right? So for instance, I'm not a car guy at all, right? So when one of our clients pulls up in a $200,000 Aston Martin, I'm blown away and it's like, hey, that's a wicked car, that's awesome. Not for me, okay? I wouldn't do that, right? I got a $20,000, $30,000 car maximum, I'm gonna drive that thing into the gutter. It doesn't matter to me, it's point A to point B. But for this person, that $200,000 car, he sees so much more value in it than I do that I have to put on his goggles when I'm looking at it, okay? So it's it's everything to him. It's all the benefits and the features and everything that he wants, okay? So I have to put on his goggles when I'm looking at that car. Same thing with this, okay? So we have to translate the value of that person, that the value of their service and the value of all the benefits and the value of the solutions and, and all the problems that are gonna be solved is more than the money they have in their pockets, okay? So losing weight, feeling great, burning fat, fitting to their skinny jeans, just feeling a hell of a lot better about themselves at home in the office, out in social circles, that means more to them than the three or four hundred bucks a month, okay? So for us, it's tough to see that, maybe not being a hundred pounds overweight or not being able to crawl up the stairs or you know keep up with the kids, so always keep that point of view, all right? So with the value ladder, we have high value, low price, okay? So prices on one spectrum, values on the other, supply and demand. So high value things, are high commitment things. Low value and low price things are low commitment things, all right? So for instance, at 360 Fitness, we are either the best or the cheapest in our minds. We need to be the best. So if that means that we're the most expensive, then so be it, okay? So we just throw a price at the package of, of all the value that we have, and that's the price accordingly, all right? So with personal training, Absolutely, it's high priced, right? But so is everything else of high value. It's high commitment. So the lower the price, the lower the commitment, all right? Uh, what I mean by this is, is let's say for, for Groupon, for instance. Let's say you see one of our competitors putting out, you know, 30 days of boot camp, plus like a crappy little ebook or whatever else, $30 for 50, or I mean 30 days for 15 bucks. Awesome, they're gonna make a ton of sales that day, low ticket sales, they're gonna sell a ton of $15 programs, but you know how many people are gonna show up for the very first workout? Barely any, if any at all, okay? So somebody is there buying the sale, buying the deal, they're not buying the service and buying the benefits and buying the long-term solution. So for a Groupon deal, 
It's a hell of a lot easier to just get sucked in with the deal and forget about it in like 15 minutes, okay? So when I buy something on Groupon, I buy the deal, I have to go back into my Groupon little app to see what I even bought and when it expires. My commitment to that thing is so low, okay? It was an impulse purchase at best. This is exactly what public gyms do, especially, you know, Januarys and Septembers. Come on in everybody, it's $10 a month, no sign up fees, you know, first month's on us even, right? $10 after that. What they're trying to do is get as many people in there and then for those people to forget that they even have a membership, okay? So it's low price, is low commitment. It's a hell of a lot easier to not go to the gym when you're paying $10 a month than to go to the gym and you're paying $400 a month here, okay? So you're having a crappy day at work, you know, the spouse is on you, the, the boss is on you, uh, you know, the kids are just driving you up the wall. Oh, you know what? I don't think I'm gonna hit the, the gym today. I'm just gonna go home and relax. That's at 10 bucks a month. It's very easy for me to make that decision because I hold that gym membership in low value and low price. So it's easy to stay not committed to it, right? If I'm paying $400 a month and the kids are, are crazy, the, the boss is on me, the spouse is on me, oh my gosh, if I don't go today, I'm gonna lose that $40 session. My trainer's gonna be on me the next day. I'm gonna have to call, I'm gonna have to talk to someone, I'm gonna have to give these excuses. Oh God, it's gonna be tough. It's a lot harder for me to bail on my commitments, right? So the higher value, the higher price stuff holds them accountable and holds them committed to the program. So what I'm talking about here is people are gonna buy on value, all right? So if they see something that has more value to them in the long run than money in their pocket does in the short run, they're gonna purchase. Okay, so it's us, up to us as salespeople to show them and translate that value to them all the way through. All right, so that's where we get away from, you know, crappy features and we talk about the benefits and we don't talk about, you know, the memberships and the contracts and the programs and the packages. That's not stuff we sell. We sell solutions, we sell answers to people's problems. Okay, so whenever that person is about to buy and actually decides to buy and they're like, yep, yeah, I'm wanting to do this you have translated that value to them and you've shown them the price isn't really an option, okay? So the higher the value something is, the more priceless that it gets, all right? So for instance, that $10 a month public gym, okay? Let's say that $10 a month public gym jacked the rates to $20 a month. That is huge. Who cares that it's only $10 a month, but in that person's eyes, that gym just doubled their rates. They're gonna have a whole bunch of people pissed off about it, even though they shouldn't be, right? $20 a month compared to $10, it's like, oof, right? They're gonna to start to haggle on price. They're gonna to start to like say this is too expensive. It's the one of the first things to go because they hold it in low value because it's so cheap, all right? So if you've ever downloaded like a free report or a free ebook online or um, you know, free this, free that, you got a coupon on the mail that's free, man. Right? If I use it, I use it. If I don't, I don't. Who cares? Right? So when it's free for somebody, it, it doesn't really have a tangible value, so they just kind of put it off to the wayside. All right? But for personal training, that person is going to make some changes in their lifestyle, make some changes in their budget, make some changes in their schedule and everything around them to make it work long term. Right? So for instance, like a mortgage. Let's say that person's mortgage rate went from $1,500 a month to $2,000 a month. Yeah, that sucks. It's gonna be a big punch in the face, but people are gonna hustle their asses off to make that other $500 a month to make sure that they actually keep their house, make sure they have a roof over their kids and their wife and their husband's you know, heads right at night. But if somebody jacks their, their public gym membership from $10 to $20 a month, that's the first thing to go. So even though it was a $10 increase, in their brain, they hold it in such low value, they're gonna discard it right off the bat. But if somebody jacked their mortgage from $1,500 to $2,000 a month, you bet your ass they're gonna really work hard and really hustle to make that happen for their family because it's priceless at this point because they're so committed and they see so much value in having shelter, right? A home for their family that they're gonna make it happen, all right? So when that person says, yeah, I wanna do this, I wanna have my initial assessment, let's start Monday, you've established that value to them and you've made them climb that ladder high enough, all right? 
So the value ladder, the higher the value, doesn't matter about price, the more committed they are, such as like a personal training membership, right? And then the lower the value, usually the lower the price, the less committed they are. You know, boot camps, public gyms, crappy ass group on deals, all that fun stuff. So it really just translates it right off the bat. Um, even if it's the same or similar service, the price of it is going to establish uh, perception of value and perceived value right off the bat. One analogy I really like to use it is that you're going to go buy a brand new car, all right? You go to this awesome Cadillac dealership and you see two brand new Escalades side by side, exact same model uh, from the outside, it looks all the same. You see one priced at $90,000, right? MSRP on a Cadillac. Or if you see the exact same model on Escalade for $5,000. Which one do you feel that has more value? Which one are you more likely to buy? It isn't that $5,000 Cadillac because you know that it's way too cheap compared to the perception of value that you know something's wrong with it, right? It's a lemon, the tranny's busted, you know, the, the tires are filled with rocks, it doesn't matter, okay? So that perception of value. So usually things are on a higher value scale, we're gonna have a higher price because there's people and experts in that field that say, yeah, compared to everything else, this should have a higher price point because of the value is higher, all right? So always remember that. You could be selling a Cadillac, but if you're competing on price and putting it at $5,000, you're gonna lose more customers than you're gonna gain. And the customers that you're gonna gain at $5,000, well, they're gonna haggle you down to 4,500 and 4,000. And it doesn't matter what else, whatever else is wrong with that caddy. If you start to compete on price and not value, you are going to descend down that value ladder very fast. And you're gonna have to compete with Groupon and, you know, crappy $29 a month gym memberships that, that don't give you anything and don't promise results and don't give you more than just a fob system to scan on it, right? We're not competing with places that just rent equipment, right? We are in the results business. So let them just climb that ladder and when they're ready to buy, you show them enough value. So good job.